When it comes to recent innovations, few watch brands can compete with Formex. After being founded back in the 90s, they took the internet by storm in 2018 with the launch of the Essence, a stylish chronometer featuring a patented suspension system, allowing the watch to cleverly shift up and down to better conform to the wearer's wrist. Hidden in the clasp was also a unique ratchet system, enabling easy and precise adjustments all while the watch remained on wrist. Altogether, this resulted in what many claim to be the most comfortable watch on the market today. Unless you're in a parallel universe, chances are you never saw my review of the Essence. And that's for one obvious reason, price. While not absurd compared to other Swiss-made competitors, the near $2,000 price still put it well out of the modest scope of the Ben's Watch Club YouTube channel. For those wondering, yes, YouTube pays me a tiny bit more if I say the price is in dollars, not pounds. So the Essence may have to wait until my next Raid Shadow Legends payday. But I was given a different opportunity recently to try the Formex brand. Yeah, they got in touch about their new, much more affordable Field Watch range. The aptly named Field comes in at less than half the cost of the Essence, at a more palatable $800. I've been excited to know, is this lowest cost Formex actually worth buying? Or does it sacrifice too much to justify a purchase? Full disclosure, this is a loaner unit from Formex. I have to return it once this review is complete and they've got no control over anything said in this video. I'll link the watch in the video description if you want to check it out. I've just been excited to try this brand because they seem to have kind of like the same ethos of what appeals to me. You guys know I like highly functional stuff. Unboxing the field is a great experience. It's a clutter-free process with a simple rounded off box that aligns well with the brand's functional values. The white stitching matches the logo nicely and helps the box to feel premium and on brand without going overboard. I don't feel like money's been wasted on something overly extravagant. Inside is the field. And despite the unimaginative name, you'll notice pretty quickly that this watch is far from generic. There are currently four versions of this watch available. My wife and I were drawn to the mahogany red version, which I think has the most complimentary color scheme of the bunch. Visually, there's a lot to unpack here. Unlike some higher end field watches, the dial here isn't plain and flat. Instead, Formex has gone with a sandwich dial, where the cream amber elements are formed by cutting away to reveal a separate layer beneath. Even the date window is sliced in an unusual angular fashion. Now, it's not an ugly watch per se, though I can't say it's much of a looker. While I'm no designer, I'm personally just not feeling the stencil numbers or the old fashioned chapter ring with the dots protruding out of it. I get it, it's a field watch, it's not meant to be dressed up or anything like that. Nevertheless, visually, it's not super functional either. Despite what they say on their site, I think legibility isn't great at a glance due to those obscure tiny numbers, especially when combined with the unusual typeface. Personally, I think there are cheaper field watches that look more pleasant than this one. I do like the fact they're experimenting. There's nothing worse than when a brand just gets stale, though my personal preferences don't align with this design. Conversely, I've always enjoyed the Formex logo and icon. I know the wording is divisive due to sounding similar to a certain pleasure brand, shall we say. Nevertheless, given their watches conform to the wrist, I think it's a logical choice, and the font and icon aren't distracting or imposing. The dial is mattified, as is the case, which I like even more. The field is constructed of grade two titanium, according to their website. This is a pretty trendy material at the moment. Like elsewhere, it appears to have been treated with some form of special scratch resistant coating, generating an incredibly muted look, perhaps even more so than the likes of Citizen Super Titanium. Of course, this approach comes with the expected benefit of significant weight reduction versus steel. You can get an automatic watch at a weight comparable to most steel quartz options, making it an obvious choice for brands prioritizing comfort and functionality. How come titanium isn't the industry standard for watches then? Well, it's much trickier to work with. So a more challenging production process is required to achieve equivalent finishing to stainless steel. This Formex has the dull gunmetal look you might be familiar with. It's very sharply cut, though the final result isn't nearly as impressive as the titanium Casio Oceanus watches I've reviewed previously, which have brushing and polishing that look almost as good as steel. Also, the super matte coating, while scratch proof, has the side effect of showing up the oil from your fingers, something that the darker tone of the similar Boulder Venture helps mitigate. I do prefer this shape over the Boulder though. The lugs conform well to the wrist and the straps also sit tightly with no unsightly gaps. At just 10.3 millimeters in thickness, it's very slick on the wrist, though some of the dimensions on their site are just straight up incorrect. Firstly, what's this whole perceived thickness thing? I could somewhat understand this for watches with domed crystals. The sapphire on this particular model is flat though, so What's the deal? I mean, I ran with the whole perceived thickness gag before I met my wife. Can't say it went too well. Confusingly, the diameter is supposedly 41 millimeters, 
yet the case is actually 39.7mm wide and 43.2mm including the crown. Why does it say 41mm? Is this a typo or have they tried to average it out or something? To be fair, due to the 48mm lug to lug, it does wear a tad larger than those measurements suggest. But that sizing claim is still a bizarre one. The watch is probably a touch too large for my skeletal arm though it is still extremely comfortable. I wore this on a recent hike through the British moorlands, and at several points, I actually forgot it was on my wrist, which is perhaps evidence that they achieved their initial objective. It is to be noted, however, that the Formex field lacks the fancy suspension system found on the higher-end models. Does the new material selection alleviate that downgrade? Well, it does to an extent, and the watch is still very comfortable to wear, though I can't help but feel like I had a similar on-wrist experience with the far cheaper Loris Titanium watch. Of course, that one wasn't nearly as well made as this one, hence the price difference, but it got me thinking nonetheless. Is it worth spending this much on a field watch with such a niche design? Would that budget be better spent on a more versatile do-it-all watch that could see more frequent wrist time? It's certainly food for thought. The field does boast powerful specifications, including a nicely engraved screw back that contributes towards a handy 150 meters of water resistance. For extra peace of mind, the crown is also screwed out. It's also got the aforementioned sapphire crystal with an anti-reflective coating that performs just as well as any of the huge industry giants. The green luminescence isn't spectacular, but is at least on par with most watches I've tested at this price. In low light, the sheer quantity of loomed areas does enable good readability. Ironically, it might be one of them that's more readable in the dark than in the light. One aspect where Formex stands out is the straps. The lowest cost stock options are nylon Velcro straps like this black one, which are smarter than they sound. They're slightly elastic and are more secure than you'd expect once fitted. Would I trust this if I was skydiving? Probably not, but for daily usage, yeah, I should easily do the job. At least these accommodate standard 20 mm spring bars, meaning you can switch the strap unlike the anti-consumer proprietary notches implemented by Casio and Citizen on some of their premium titanium watches. This field does have thin notches atop the lugs that look like they're meant to support a bracelet integration. Oddly, there aren't any bracelets to choose from on the Formex website. Additionally, if you want an official Formex leather strap, that'll be a $150 premium at checkout or a whopping $200 if purchased separately. Now, the quality of the leather is good, it would be a scam if it weren't. But what you're really paying for is the clasp mechanism. This is made primarily of what appears to be a carbon fiber reinforced polymer and uses two flexible beams, which can be squeezed to compress a metal button underneath. This metal button enables the shifting of a tiny ratchet system, allowing the clasp to slide along in microscopic steps. The whole thing is secured by a keeper and two prongs that slot into the strap holes below. In practice, this system works incredibly well and permits a huge range of adjustments, meaning you can always find the perfect fit. You don't even have to take the watch off if you don't want to during this adjustment. Is it worth spending $150 or $200 for one of these just to use on one watch? Considering the range of great watches available for that figure alone, I struggle to say yes. A highly adjustable clasp comes as standard on the Casio Oceanus T150, so it seems counterintuitive to recommend the additional cost here. Still, Formex deserves kudos for coming up with that design in the first place. They aren't resting on their laurels like other companies. It really is an innovation that stands proudly as more than just a gimmick, and it'll also ensure the durability of your straps in the long run. Powering this piece is the Swiss Solita SW200-1, which is a decent automatic high beat movement with a 41 hour power reserve. I've tried a few of these before and I've always been satisfied. While not chronometer certified like some of their higher end models, this unit clocks in at consistent plus three to plus four seconds a day. And that nice sweep is just the cherry on top. I could delve even more into the finer details, but I'd rather cut straight to the chase. I'm really not sure whether you should buy this watch or not. It's clearly a high quality product and I've seen a lot worse for the money. Many of you may love the look too, but if you appreciate the inventive ethos of Formex, I'm inclined to say save up and go the whole hog on one of their suspension models so you can get the full experience. It's difficult for me to feel enthused over this field model when there's bristling competition at the same price point and significantly lower. $800? I don't know what to think. Thanks to my supporters on Patreon for making this video financially viable. If you want to join them to get early access to videos like this, then head to the link in the video description. It's just $1. Also, YouTube thinks you'll enjoy this video next, so go on, click it.